Hello again, Biology 300 students. Mr. Parker here, checking in with you on a third screencast for the protein unit. Uh, we've done protein synthesis before. We did mutations. Now the third one here to follow. And next is the um, idea of enzymes. And the uh, enzymes are proteins that affects um, some of the reactions in your, or affects all the reactions in your chemical in your body. And that's where we're going to take a close look at how these enzymes work and you know what their function is. Um, what you should have out with you. Okay, um, you should have with you your packet. Obviously, um, the graph, the organizer, to help you organize some of your information. And these are some of the learning targets that we'll be able to accomplish, uh, be able to go ahead and answer as we go through this. And then I'll wrap it up with a short little video at the end and kind of tie everything together and hopefully reinforce some of the um, topics that we talked about in here. Okay, so moving through this. Um, Basically, metabolism, energy transfer. Uh, we talked about metabolism way back in the um, characteristics of life. Uh, basically, those are the chemical, some of the all the chemical reactions that occur within your body. All right. Uh, when we're talking about chemical reactions, you always have in the beginning of the reaction, you have what your reactants are. It's kind of like um, if you're going to make, um, you're going to cook dinner or you're going to bake something. It's these are the ingredients, okay, that you have, and then you're going to need some type of energy or some type of um, chemical or whatever it is to get the reaction going. And then you're going to need. Then eventually, what you end up with is your products. So initially, you have all your stuff you need to bake your cake with, and then at the end, you have your product, which is which is your cake, okay. Um, but you needed something for that reaction and the, the, for the cake to bake, um, and like put it in the oven or whatever to get everything moving. Okay, so you have your reactants, products, and then you have something that's activating the process of the chemical reactions to occur. So the energy must be a, um, added to activate this reaction, and the, the whole reason for that energy is to help break the bonds between the atoms that occur. Okay, so these atoms and the reactants that are kind of holding them together, or the bonds are holding them together, they need to be broken so they can react with each other in order to get the product that we want at the end. Now, under normal conditions, a high amount of energy is needed to start a reaction. Okay, so you need that, you know, heat, okay, whatever, electricity, whatever it is to get the reaction going. So if you look at this graph here, and you can see um, as we interpret the graph, um, what you will notice here is you have this high activation energy that occurs. Okay, this is the, so this is the energy that you get from your react your um, reactants in the initial process. And as we take this high activation energy in order to get the bonds broken and get everything working, and then you have this very low amount of output of energy that you get at the end product of the reaction. So in cases like this, you have a very high activation energy. Reactions would occur so slowly um, that to support life, it, our life would be in very like you want to say like slow motion. Okay, um, so this activation energy is really too high for all the chemical processes to occur in our body fast enough in order for us to carry on our normal processes that we need to have and how fast they have to occur. All right. So what the, um, we have in our body is what we call a catalyst. Okay, and catalysts, what they do is they speed up the rate of reaction that's occurring. And how they do that is they lower the activation energy okay, um, that is needed to get the reaction going. And by lowering this activation energy, it will speed up the reaction. So there's not as much energy needed for the process to begin, then it can go a lot faster. And these catalysts are not changed or used up during a reaction. Basically, they, they bond to the chemicals, or the reactants, okay, and then eventually it breaks off and doesn't get changed in the process. Okay, so these catalysts help speed up the reaction by lowering the activation energy, and um, that's what we need in our body for our, our reactions to occur at the, at the rate we need them to, to occur at. Okay, so what a catalyst? So what it is? What does it do? You know, looking at the graph that we looked at previously. Okay, now remember the previous graph that we saw. The activation energy had to go way up here in order for this to happen. All right, way too long. Okay, too much energy required for the output that we're getting um, for this to occur in our body. So what we do is we have these catalysts, and these catalysts, as you notice, they lower okay tremendously the amount of activation or the amount of energy needed to get the process going. Okay, even though we still come out with the, less, the same amount of energy, the process takes so much faster because the energy that we need for the process to occur um, doesn't take as you know you don't need as much. Okay, so the living cell has special molecules in our body which act as catalysts. Okay, and um, what these special molecules are, are called enzymes. 
And enzymes are protein biomolecules. Okay, so enzymes are classified as a protein. That's why I put it in this section. So they're made up of amino acids. All right, um, they are specific to a substance or a reaction. So they, there's a certain pro, a certain enzyme that reacts with a certain substance. Okay, and then what this does is it speeds up the reactions in our body. And you can see it by looking at this 10 billion times faster. Okay, than what it was. You know, in order for your body to do the like a movement of arms and all that stuff to get all these chemical reactions occurring fast enough, in order to be like a split second thing, we need these enzymes. Otherwise, you know, you might think about, you know, think about all the chemical reactions, you know, digesting food and all this stuff that occurs. You know, it just would take way too long um, in, if we don't have these enzymes in our body to help with that process. You know, speeding up 10 billion times faster. Okay, so how do these enzymes work? Well, what they do is they bind to a specific reactants to form what we call a complex. All right, so again, remember we mentioned enzymes, they have a certain, they're a protein, and protein's function is divide, defined by their shape, and these enzymes are going to react with a specific reactant to form a complex. And then these reactants are called the substrates. All right, so you have your substrates or your reactants in the process. Um, the substrate will bind to the enzyme Okay, and where this bonding occurs is referred to as the activation or the active site. All right, so the substrate is going to bond with the enzyme. So those are your reactants are bonding with the enzyme, and where they bond together is the active site, and that will um, eventually get the process moving a lot faster. Okay, so looking at this picture here, okay, this is our big molecule here uh, of catalase. All right, so this huge molecule is actually your enzyme. Okay, and then here's your little reactants inside here, and where they come together is your activation site. So looking at this kind of more of a generic picture, notice this large molecule here is your enzyme. It's going to bond here with the, your substrate, which is your reactants, at the activation site. So remember, your enzymes are very large. You have your little substrate coming in, which are your reactants. They bond together, act at the active site, and then the process can begin, and the chemical reaction can begin. Okay. So now, the thing you got to remember is that we've talked about that the uh, the catalyst, the enzymes, do not change. So at the end of this process, this is going to be the same. The enzymes are. What's going to change is your substrate. Okay. Your change or your pro your reactants are now going to become your products. Okay. And these products will change, but your substrate. Uh, sorry, but your enzyme will remain the same. So looking at an equation here, okay, um, we have here, this is our enzyme, here's our substrate. Now we're going to come together and we form our complex. They've bonded together, so this is our complex. Uh, I'll spell it out here for you, so you have that there. That's our complex. You know, I, if it was me, I would jot these down in my notes. Okay, I would definitely have this little diagram in my notes so I have it. So here are your enzyme, substrate, these are your substrate or your reactants. Uh, they bond together to form a complex. And what we're left with is the enzyme. Notice the enzyme hasn't changed. And now we have also our products, which have changed. So our reactants or our substrate is now become our products, and they have changed at the end process. Okay. So in, important um, enzyme, so for example, catalase, it breaks down H2O2 into an H2O or into water and oxygen. So hydrogen peroxide into a to um, is toxic to cells, so your um, body is able to break those down. So looking at the, um, you know, using this generic formula or reaction and bringing it down here, notice the catalase, which is the enzyme here. Okay, so this is our enzyme, this is our E. Okay, plus our substrate or our reactants. Here's our complex, which was our E and S. All right, and then we end up with our enzyme. And then we have our product at the end. Okay, and this again is what your, the whole idea of your protein is supposed to be going to help speed up this reaction or speed up the enzymes to speed up this reaction. So the, end, uh, the enzymes, okay, are use an induced fit to help bonds form or break between the compounds. And um, so the enzyme here is helping the reaction to occur fast enough that we need for our body. So uh, we've talked about this many times in class about the naming of these enzymes because we've talked about DNA polymerase, RNA polymerase, helicase, 
Okay, these are some of the enzymes we have mentioned. Enzymes are named by taking either the name of the substrates or the action performed and then adding the ASE ending at the end. So for example, we talked about DNA polymerase, which acts on the DNA and the long polynucleotide chain, right? Uh, lactase, all right? And ligase, these are some other types of examples that we have here. So again, just notice, the main thing you need to notice is that they're under, enzymes always end in the ASE ending. Um, and it tells you it's an enzyme. All right. So, what are some of the factors that help, um, you know, that help speed up or slow down these enzyme enzymatic activity? All right. Some of the factors could be first off could be temperature. Okay. So, if you increase the temperature, you're going to increase the rate of reaction or the speed up the um, process. If you decrease the temperature, you're going to decrease the rate. Okay. So, temperature is too low or too high. Will denature the enzyme, may, meaning that the enzyme won't be working properly. All right. Now you can always bring those back and return them back as long as you get to the temperature that's required, um, is you know below that too high or too low point. Okay. Um, you can change the pH. All right. Um, the pH has changed depending where you know what type of enzyme. It might not work properly. Okay. Um, you know these are just you know. Basically, you need to know that temperature affects it, pH can affect it, um, and each one of these enzymes has its own range of the optimal pH that it wants to work in. So again, it just depends on what type, what enzyme we're actually working with. Now remember, enzymes are specific to the substrate that they're working with. Okay, so these are just some of the factors, you know, two major factors that affect enzymatic activity if they're, you know, increasing or decreasing, working or not working properly. All right, and then uh, the basic last part. Um, you know that I have here just kind of talks about some of the different uh, the process how it works. Okay, we talked about metabolism. It's all the chemical activities in a cell. You know, we remember we have talked in the beginning of the year we talked about anabolism and catabolism. Well, when you add those two together, you make up metabolism. All right. Well, there's two different type of reactions. There's what we call a synthesis reaction, which is the building up of these reactions, uh, building up of things, or there's the decomposition, which is the breaking down. Okay, remember, um, if, so if you think about it, we have synthesis here, putting together decomposition, which is um, putting, breaking things down. This is where we're adding or taking away a water in synthesis. In hydrolysis, we're, we're adding the water and um, in the process. Okay, so I'm going to show you a quick little video, wrap it up, and then uh, we'll be done with the screencast number three on um, enzymes and the basic functions for our body. So let me jump over here real quick to um, a video and kind of hopefully uh, reinforce some of the ideas of protein synthesis, or sorry, for enzyme activity for yourself. Here's an example of a chemical reaction. One large compound is broken into two smaller compounds. This reaction takes place much too slowly to be useful in a cell. In order to speed up chemical reactions, cells make special proteins called enzymes. An enzymatic reaction begins when a specific compound binds to an area on the enzyme called the active site. The compound that binds is called the enzyme's substrate. Notice the shape of the substrate and the active site. They fit each other like a lock and key. In general, each enzyme's active site can fit only one kind of substrate and so can speed up only one kind of reaction. When a substrate binds to the active site, an enzyme-substrate complex is formed. A slight change in the shape of the substrate weakens a chemical bond. This weak bond is easily broken, splitting the substrate into two pieces. The pieces, now referred to as products, detach from the enzyme. In enzymatic reactions, only the substrate is changed. The enzyme itself is unaffected by the reaction. After the products leave the active site, the enzyme is free to speed up another reaction. All right, well, welcome back, and hopefully that uh, video had helped reinforce the ideas of enzymes and basically kind of the lock and key where the basic uh, substrate, uh, the substrate has a certain enzyme to react with, okay, or to bond with, and eventually at the end, the 
enzyme does not change, but your reactant or your substrate will eventually become your products will change at the end. Okay, so again, your enzymes is there to help speed up all those chemical reactions that occur within your body. Okay, so this is screencast number three for the unit six on proteins. And um, so this wraps up our unit on um, proteins. And hopefully this has helped you out and gives you some basic knowledge on the idea of enzyme and its activity for the cell.